It is December 16th, 2011, and the Game Boy Advance 3DS Ambassador games are now available in North America, Europe, and Japan, I believe. And I'm glad I got my games at last. I Actually, I was predicting that they'd drop the Game Boy Advance games on Christmas Day, like they how they did for the Virtual Console Super Mario Brothers on the way they launched that the Christmas 2006, sort of like almost sort of like a Christmas gift, except for you have to buy it, so it's sort of like not really a gift, but it was so cool. But anyway, so I've got it. I'm looking at my 3DS here. If you're wondering why I'm looking down, um, basically I'm I'm very happy with the game selection here. I've got I already got my 10 NES games already. The I've got Wario Land 4. I had this back in the day. I barely played through like the first like level of it, and I lost it or something. Now you got Mario Kart Super Circuit. I rented that, and I'll talk more about that later. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Never even played it before. Mario vs. Donkey Kong, one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games. Haven't played it in ages. Now I have it on my, my 3DS. Yoshi's Island 3, Super Mario Advance 3. I haven't played the Game Boy Advance version of Yoshi's Island yet, so we'll see how that plays. Fire Emblem. I'm really interested in seeing how this plays, because this is going to be my first Fire Emblem game. I'm not that big in hardcore RPGs, but heck, it's for free, so I might as well try it. And... Just knowing how well suited Fire Emblem is to DS, and you know, there's one coming for the 3DS. I'm willing to give this a try because I know it's going to be a great experience on the 3DS. And hey, I if the, if it comes out for the Wii U, I might have to give that a try too. So Metroid Fusion, uh, one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games. Zelda: The Minish Cap. Well, you know, I have I met Miyamoto wearing the Minish Cap that my mom knitted for me. So I have certainly loved the Minish Cap. Um, there's a video of that on my YouTube of me meeting Miyamoto if you're curious about that adventure. And so those are the GBA games. And I want to comment on the NES games. Uh, so even now, people, some people are saying that, oh, it's a ripoff. Uh, come on, really? They, they gave away, Nintendo gave away 20 free games because of a price drop. And outside, Nintendo absolutely did not have to do that. It's it's one hundred percent damage control. I mean, if you buy a mobile, a new smartphone, a new music player, a new any any kind of electronics, a new TV, anything, and if they drop the price after three months, you're not going to get a refund or a rebate. You're not going to get a coupon to buy. You're not going to the company's not going to send you your money back. This is a one hundred percent goodwill gesture. To avoid alienating the people who bought the 3DS at its original at its launch price, and so when I'm from my, I, I start I started a, a fair amount of controversy when I said, you know, when I said that I don't see a 3D a major 3DS redesign, with you know adding a second circle pad or a bigger battery, in the immediate future, and I started a lot of controversy. And the reason I think that is because. Look at Nintendo had to give away 20 free games. I mean, if it wasn't for the 3DS Master program, I could say I'm very confident that there'd be absolutely no NES games or Game Boy Advance games on the 3DS at this point in its lifespan. And Nintendo went out of their way to do that and give them away for free just to avoid alienating people who bought the 3DS before the price drop. If they have to go through that and the and this is all to and to a firm confidence in the 3DS as a product. So if they have to go through that much trouble just to to soothe fans after a price drop, then why would then to launch a major redesign of the 3DS within a year or or a year or two of its launch, adding another entire analog control and more buttons to it. Like with all the the, the Game Boy Advance and the DS redesigns, it always had the same number of buttons. I mean, if they added an X and Y button to the Game Boy Advance and a lot of games used it, then that would make everyone who had a Game Boy Advance, they'd be screwed unless they bought like a... They'd have to redesign the games for this new system. I don't see Nintendo within the next year or two designing a whole... A, a re, majorly redesigning the 3DS, let alone adding major new controls to it that will effectively make the original model obsolete unless you add a, a $20 bulky add-on that really slaughters the system's pocketability as a portable system. I just don't see that happening. But back to the 3DS Ambassador program and the games themselves. Yeah, some people whined about some of the NES games like, 
oh, Wrecking Crew, and hey, come on, to, both NES Zelda games. Like, some people complain about Wrecking Crew and Donkey Kong Jr. and <coughs> and Metroid and Yoshi, and to me that just strikes me as I really just. The people saying that, I can only imagine that this is their first NES experience and they aren't used to the idea of arcade games. Because I remember like when the NES Classics came out for the Game Boy Advance and a lot of younger kids who only learned about Ice Climbers from Super Smash Bros. Melee uh, got Ice Climbers for the Game Boy Advance and then immediately sold it back to GameStop. Like, <coughs> excuse me, still a little sick here. Like the week after the NES Classics came out, there were like 20 used copies of of a uh, ice climber at <coughs> in GameStop. All right, I'm gonna finish this up before I like die on camera here. Uh, so I'm really excited about all these games. I'm really um the fact that the Game Boy Advance games on here they don't when you cl there's there's like a warning like when you close the system while playing a GBA game it won't actually go to sleep. Which is kind of confusing, because when you're playing a Game Boy Advance game on the 3DS, and you close the lid, <coughs> the screens turn off, and the sound stops. So it's kind of really baffling that the, the screens turn off, and the sound stops, and apparently the action pause, I haven't really tried that, but it's not asleep, it's, that's really confusing. But especially since, I'm surprised they couldn't add that, because they, you know, NES games certainly didn't have a sleep mode. And Game Boy games didn't have a sleep mode, but they added those for the Virtual Console versions of those games. But the Game Boy Advance, I think they really just... They really didn't make a proper Virtual Console for the Game Boy Advance games that are offered to the Master Program. They basically... It seems like how the 3DS is playing these is literally like... You know how you when you play Wii ga uh, GameCube games on the Wii, and it's basically acting as a GameCube and the entire... Wii is pretty much locked out until so you restart the system. That's basically how these Game Boy Advance games are playing. I basically just threw a ROM on here and it's just running it, acting just like it's a Game Boy Advance. Except for you can use the home button and exit out the game. But it's kind of disappointing that there's no proper, uh, that you can't close it and go to sleep on it. it and it detracts from the portability a bit, but it's free and it's not, you know, these, these games all, all these Game Boy games have a save mode anyway and you know, Metroid Fusion, uh, yeah, Metroid Fusion and, what is that other one, and Mario vs. Stone Killing, I believe, both have manual sleep modes where you, like, hit LR and select or something and it goes to sleep, so I, I don't know if that works on here, but, as for the game selection, uh, I really, the only, I'm gonna say something a bit controversial, uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit, I, my first Mario Kart game was Mario Kart 64, I liked it, my second was Super Circuit, uh, I didn't like it as much then, because it's not so much like, oh, the graphics are worse, because, you know, I was playing NES games at the time. It's just like, sort of the style of it, where the whole world kind of rotates around your character, and now I I like it even less, because you know, the boards feel very flat to me. I didn't like Super Mario Kart that much either, and mind you, at the time, I was playing games like um, and like, uh, RC Pro, uh, like RC Program for the Game Boy, and Anton Siena's uh, Monaco GP for the Game Gear. So I was playing 8-bit uh, racers with relatively low-tech graphics. I just didn't like the style where, where the the way the controls work. They, it feels now it feels very like I have to very gently tap on the D-pad, or else I go like screaming out off the path. I, I just I'm just not enjoying it as much as I enjoyed uh, Mario Kart 64 or DS. <coughs> and so, but, uh, you know, it's for free, so I'm probably going to, I'm, I'm enjoying it anyway. So, that's just my talking about the Ambassador Program, which is now complete. I guess I could delete that certificate from there. I don't doubt Nintendo's going to come out with another 20 games they want to give us. But, uh, thank you for, uh, be staying good to your fans. <coughs> <coughs> uh, Alright, I should stop recording now. Thank you very much for watching.